Welcome to the show, guys. We are talking about my personal favorite topic. We're talking running backs. Are they going up? Are they going down? Are they rising? Are they falling? Five big names here. And in the studio, we've got the great and powerful Jimmy, a.k.a. the Maverick. What is going on, Jim the man? Hey, man, just another day without any football. So I've got to, like, just uh, look, research players. That's all I do, you know, in my spare time. Dude, I'm so excited. We're in this final pocket of like nothingness. And then it's just going to boom like a rocket, like Elon Musk sending it out in outer space. That's what's going to happen with fantasy football. I've got the energy. I'm excited. I know it's off season, but I don't care. I'm pumped up. And Jim, you've got a new mic coming in the mail. I've ordered you a new mic for the Counselor Podcast. So we got so much going on. I, I like your backdrop. We don't need to change anything. You're, you're wearing the blazers now. Dude, we're set for the season. What else do we need now? I mean, that's it. All we need is time to pass, right? All we need is uh, people. Man, we, what's, uh, we want people. <laughs> people to come on because the people that are watching now are dedicated, but then everybody kind of floods in April during that draft and then beyond the numbers are going to be booming. So I'm excited, man. It's going to be big. And today we're talking running backs. We have five of them for you. Like I said, we're going to talk if they're rising or falling, but before every show, I want to just touch on some news and notes. Now, again, if you watch this show later on, fast forward through this part, because again, we want to make it a daily show, but also a lot of the stuff is evergreen. You can come back to it, right? So you're like, oh, okay, news and notes is not as relevant, but it is relevant now because these guys are on new teams. So let's talk about it here. So without further ado, Jim, we now have breaking news. I really need a new theme song for that. I need to find something there, Jim. Don't you think we need a better song than that guy? That guy is not uh, not very. I, I think it's the perfect length. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. I think we're, you're gonna end up end up heading up the news during the season. Um, it just sounds better when you say it than me. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Both of us. I like the back and forth. It doesn't matter who announces it. But free agent Dante Foreman. Bears has agreed to a term with the Cleveland Brown per sources, adding more to that depth. Foreman's a good player. He's just not like outstanding. What do you think of Foreman to the Bears? You know, he's a quality backup, but th there's already, uh, you've already got um, the other guy there. Gosh, why am I? For, uh, there's Rashad Johnson. There's a bunch of other guys there, man. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the one who filled in when Chubb went out with an injury. So, you know, um, I, Jerome, Ford, not, Jerome Ford, Jerome Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Jerome Ford. Yeah. So he's, he's a quality backup. This is just a depth piece, I think. And it's not surprising that Chicago let him go because they added, um, Deandre Swift. And so they didn't need four running backs in that backfield. It's still three. Um, I, personally, I think Swift is still due for some regression this year. Cause that was a, a contract year. He played the full season. Um, I think he's going to fall back to what he usually does. And so there might be an opportunity there to draft one of those backups and they'll get some significant playing time this season. So, yeah. So it's not exciting news here. Foreman, uh, Mike Williams. I mean, this is crazy, man. The guy, if you want a guy that plays three games out of a season, I think he played three games last year. Uh, Mike Williams, the Jets, and they're acting like they're all excited. Like, again, you're not as high as Aaron Rodgers as I am, but I'm still knocking on Aaron Rodgers. It's like injuries are us over there. You've got Mike Williams, who can't stay healthy, who's at the tail end of his career. You got Aaron Rodgers, who's clearly at the tail end of his career. Now, again, they could have this last hurrah. You got Garrett Wilson. There's a bright side. You got Brees Hall. You got some other weapons. This offense could be really good, but Mike Williams doesn't excite me. And I think the deal is up to $15 million. I think they overpaid for one year for Mike Williams. Maybe they get a full season. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm again, I'm I'm not super thrilled with this. You know, Alan Lazard is also on that team and Lazard actually has a relationship with Rodgers. Uh, that's yeah. that's why they brought him in. So, I'm not really sure what kind of role um uh, Mike Williams is going to have and how many games he's going to be able to play. The dude always gets injured. Um, you know, he's third I think he's 29 this year. You know, he's uh, yeah. he's older. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm not really at all interested in in him for fantasy. Yeah. Um. Again, Mike Williams doesn't wow me, and Lazard I'm not excited about either. I understand. I think as much as I dislike Mike Williams in regards to not staying on the field and meh talent, he's good. You know, 50 50 balls, red zone stuff. But again, I don't think Lazard is good either. So, not. Yeah, not I mean okay. Lazard, I kind of like for best ball, uh, just as a, a you know as a depth piece. I think he's gonna get you know he'll get about 100 targets, and and he he gets pretty good 
pretty good volume off of that. Uh, you don't want him for regular fantasy football, no. though. But uh, I think he's a I think he's a decent choice because he's available very late on draft boards. So you for know, the record, I, I will like have that. no I will have no Lazard on my team. And sometimes you stick up for some of these bottom feeders. I said I read somebody in the comments last time they said. You know, sometimes Joe gets annoyed when Jim gives you average players. I don't get annoyed. I'm just like, I don't agree. I just like, okay, like I wouldn't touch Lazard. And that's this difference of opinion. Like, okay, you may draft Lazard. I may not draft Lazard. And that's what makes it so exciting. We're not going to draft the same players. Jim might like someone that I hate and vice versa. And that's okay. That's what makes fantasy so fun. We're not going to agree. Yeah, like I said, I think he has a role in best ball, yes. but he's not a good player for regular fantasy football because he's not consistent and yeah. he doesn't get enough volume. But, uh, you know, w when you're in, when you're in a draft board for best ball, you, you want players that can have spike weeks. They can have, get a, get a touchdown and become a, a relevant player that, that becomes a starter for that week. When, when we, when one of your main players has a down yeah. week, you know, that's what you're looking for. Um, as you're just trying to score points, and so those kind of players, you know, there's a ton of tight ends. I call them 50, 505 guys, 50 yeah. catches, 500 yards, five touchdowns. These mm -hmm. players are completely worthless for regular fantasy football unless they score a touchdown. And in best ball, that plays to their strength because they will only start when they have their touchdown. And so right. they become a relevant player for best ball. But for regular fantasy football, you can't even start them. You can't do anything with them. All right, last piece of news, Jerry Judy, uh, three-year contract extension worth up to $58 million, including $41 million guaranteed, man. Brown's paying up. Again, Judy's not a guy that I personally would be investing in, in fantasy or reality. I mean, he's got some upside with a, with a return of Deshaun Watson with the aging uh, Amari Cooper there. But I don't know. I just feel like the Browns could have maybe drafted a receiver or did better than Judy. He's just not that good years to wow us right yeah he's not and, and really the the contract's not a huge contract i think it's like 15 million dollars a year or something like that um you know so he's not getting top dollar value but we've i think i've seen enough out of judy uh you know a years to wow me kind of player I've, i think i've seen enough i'm i'm not wowed i'm not interested uh it kind of it's disappointing for elijah moore who i thought was really gonna have a a, a good year um but now, you know, I guess maybe he's relegated to the three. I, I, I can't really tell which of those guys is going to be the two, who's going to be the three. I'm really not interested in either now. So, no. All right. That's it for uh, breaking news. All right. We are done with that. So let's just go to these running backs here. I'm going to pull it up here. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up, drop a comment below and grab 16 rounds. You can pre-order now. Use code SMASH to save Secure the solution, secure the championship, guys. Opto players drafted each round, secure it below. Use code SMASH, okay, guys? If you haven't gotten 16 rounds, I don't know what to tell you, man. You need to get on it, pre-order now for a low price. SMASH is the code, okay? Go do it. And smash that thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. Gets the message out there for everybody. All right, Kyron Williams is the first running back we're talking about. Based on last year, he finished seventh in PPR. The question we're going to be asking, I want you guys to drop in the comments, is he going to go up or down based on last year? Again, having a great year last year. What do you have? 228 attempts, 1,144 yards, five, uh, 12 touchdowns. Amazing. And in 12, he did that in 12 games. Now, the only knock to him, people are going to say, and I, I don't have any issues, 5'9", 194, slightly undersized compared to your prototypical running back. I think Jim was making that argument before. But finishing seventh is a lofty goal. The good news is here, though, Jim, and this is what I like, is that in free agency, nobody came in to be a threat to him. I mean, it could be different after the NFL draft. I think they believe in him. I think he's efficient and strong enough to do it. Um, you know, Jim, what are your thoughts here? I like Kyron. I'm, we still got to decide on is he going to finish above or seventh in PPR overall? Top 10, basically. Well, again, um, with, with Kyron Williams, because of the, because he's undersized, the dude has missed a lot of time in the NFL since coming in. Uh, 2022, he only played 10 games. Last year, he played 12. Now, he's great. He's in a great system. His coach believes in him. These are all positive things. But right. for me, I just don't think he has the durability to make it through a full season. And I think what we saw last year was kind of like peak, his peak value, like what, what he could do optimally uh this is the same concerns i have about devin odd chain by the way um i think that we are going to see a drop off as he could miss significant time oh. and, and and so that's my big knock on him uh that that i i just don't trust that he has the durability to make it through a full season at his size well 
we've got verbal confirmation from his agent that he will be attending the sports summit. So Jim, I can't wait for you to tell him that he may not finish the season. I can't wait. To see it. <laughs> I cannot wait to see it. If not, we're going to replay this clip and then we're gonna... <laughs> now, now Jim rolls. He's shaking in his boots. Oh man. Now, now you're making me nervous, man. I'm like, I might not be able to make that interview there. Uh, counselor. Uh... <laughs> But, but, you know, I mean, again, it's, it's, we've got two undersized running backs in the top 12, basically for the, for, for the, for fantasy drafts this year, dude, I just, I, that makes me really nervous. I really, really nervous about that. And, and so I don't know, man, I, I, like I said, I think he's a great player, but can he stand, can he go a full season? I'm not sure he can. Well, so. durability, and, I, and I appreciate the honesty, and that's what we're going to ask him. You know, durability, 12 games. We, as fantasy fans, we you know we want to see you finish a season if we're owning you. But, of course, as a person, too, we want to see you finish a season as well. So uh, we, we won't play this uh, clip, Jim, for him. But we'll mention that durability is probably a, a question mark for sure. Uh, based on the 12 games, we want to see him finish a full season. How's he feeling going into the season? Love to get some feedback from him directly. So we're working on probably getting him. It's not guaranteed yet. To the summit, um, we're working on that. So, and again, if he stays healthy, I mean, look at. But again, what he did in twelve games to still finish as a top ten back, that shows you the type of ceiling. So, he's coming to the summit based on what we saw last year. Predicate he stays healthy all year. Predicate they don't draft anybody else. He made it out of free agency unscathed. There is no reason, you know, that he doesn't finish top ten. Other than the only reason is obviously durability number two that he got lucky or it was an anomaly year. And I don't believe that's the case. I think he's really good. I think we'll, we'll have to see. Again, this is going to be an exciting player to watch. We'll be watching closely. And uh, so, Jim, so you're going to see if he's going to finish outside the top seven in, in the RB. Yeah, I'm going to say he's going he's gonna to drop from where he finished last year. I'm saying that, you know, my gut's telling me he just falls outside the seven. He's not going to finish seven. But I'm optimistic that he finishes as a top five running back. So I'm going to lean – a slight fall off, but hopefully based on that ceiling, he finishes on top. All right, Jim. So let's move on here. Next one. All right, Jim, Josh Jacobs. That's your guy here. Now we're going to ask the question. You guys drop it in the comments. Is he going to finish over or under his finish? And last year, where did he finish Jim? Uh, he finished 28. So the obvious answer is he's going to finish above that, but how much above that, which we're going to dive into now, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, Josh Jacobs, let's let's face it. He did have a down year last year. He was coming off a pinnacle season the, the year before where he had over 400 touches and targets. So I, I knew he was going to decline last year. But then you just saw the complete dumpster fire that the Las Vegas Raiders offense was last year down, you know, downgrade the quarterback changes in coaches, just a mess. It was a mess. And now he goes into probably the best free agent situation you could ask for going to the green Bay Packers uh, with outstanding offensive assets surrounding him, a quality young quarterback that really showed a lot of promise last year. Um, they got rid of Aaron Jones. They did retain AJ Dillon, but we didn't see AJ Dillon do anything to make me think that he is anything other than just a backup for Jacobs. Um, and, and so, uh, I, I think he's going to have an extremely strong bounce back season. I think the fantasy community uh, agrees with that as, as he is currently going as the RB 10 off of right. most draft boards. And I like him, man. I, uh, he's one of my favorites now to target for, uh, for an early running back, you get him in the second round. I think that's a, that's a great place to get him. Uh, I like him a lot. What do you think? I like him. Uh, again, didn't uh, finish the whole season last year. I think he was kind of fizzling out from that offense, and you almost feel like he felt the trade was coming on. So I don't know if he was putting the pedal to the metal, essentially, right? But again, you kind of want to put the pedal to the metal because it's it's a balance because you want to preserve your body and you don't want to break so another team picks you up. But simultaneously, you know, you want to retract, but also you want to really put on a show so somebody pays you big. So again, I think he does has a great season based on situation. Talent is good. I don't think he's the best. I don't think he's Brees Hall caliber, but I think he's a really good running back unbiased here because again, you know, I dislike Jacobs as a person based on our interactions of back and forth and the, you know, the, the potential boxing match that never happened. So, uh, yeah. So again, taking the bias out, I think he's in a great situation. I feel good about him. Tons of volume, tons of opportunity. And again, tons of touchdowns. So I'm, I'm kind of excited for him, um, for fantasy. 
more or less. Uh, next guy here, Jim, uh, Jameer Gibbs. Guy finished 10th last year. And I keep talking about Jameer Gibbs a lot because the thing about Jameer Gibbs is that this guy, had he played as a full three-down workhorse back, would have been the number one player in fantasy. 182 attempts, 219 were gone and wasted away on David Montgomery. And Jameer Gibbs did just did just so much with such little volume, 5.2 yards per carry, 10 touchdowns on the ground, just under 1,000 yards and 945 Finishing 10th, again, based on that talent, based on the youth, based on the upside, based on the draft capital of the Detroit Lions, I can only imagine they're going to use him more. And again, no way but up for him. But again, the Montgomery factor is going to be a pest and very high draft capital this year, which is a big turnoff for me. But aside from that, he gets more volume. He turns it up more this year and he finishes above the 10. So I think he's rising, but... How much the ceiling is limited because of Montgomery. You know? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about Montgomery. I mean, one thing we clearly saw that this team is able to do is it's able to generate two fantasy-worthy running backs. And we did see as the course of the season went on, he was getting a larger and larger share of the backfield. He was getting a larger and larger share, share of the high of the high value touches and targets, the goal line work. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the work in the receiving game dude had 71 targets last year, just outstanding. And I see him as an Alva Kamara type player, man. I think, uh, that's the kind of upside that he offers, um, and his explosiveness on a great offense. I just love the Detroit lions offense. Um, yeah. uh, and apparently the fantasy community does too, because he is the RB four going off at the end of the first round yeah. in most drafts. I'm totally comfortable taking him there. If he's available, if you're picking like 11th or 12th and he's sitting there on the board, dude, I would take him, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 times. I've got no worries about his fantasy upside for this year. And certainly his ceiling is he could be the number one. It will be hard to do with Montgomery there, but you never know. You never know what's going to happen. But um, I, I like him. I, I like everything about his situation and his promise. I think there's two caveats there. here. I think you really have to, again, factor that Montgomery factor. And it's like, bar, like if Montgomery gets hurt, look out, you know, sky's the limit. I think that if you do draft Jameer Gibbs, <clears throat> you have to combo him with another running back. I think you got to go back to back running backs. If you get him at the end of round one, you know, I think you still should get a true RB one because is it not going to bother you answer? Honestly. Okay. You draft him in your first round, you know, the first drive of the, you got your <clears throat> fantasy week one, everybody, I pay attention every week up until the wire and the championship, but some people are really just tuned in that first week. Cause that first week you're excited. It's been a long time. You know, you turn on the Detroit lions game and then you've got, you've drafted Jameer Gibbs round one. Won't it just tick you off just to see Montgomery come out on that first drive? Like, you know, I think that would really genuinely bother me. Wouldn't it? Like you see Montgomery's face on the first drive, you know, I know how upset you got last year. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm talking, I'm talking. I, I, it doesn't worry me because you know going in, that's what it's going to be, right? You you know going yeah. in, if you take Jameer Gibbs, yeah, you know going in that that's what's going to happen. That 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 Montgomery's going to involve be involved in some drives, and they're yeah. not going to be putting Gibbs in there. Uh, you got you just got to take that for what it is. Even with you know uh, Montgomery playing. 218 carries getting 218 touches. This dude was still the RB 10. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it, it doesn't really matter. He still has tons of upside. We have seen the explosiveness. We've seen what he can do. Uh, and this offense is great. It's an offense that will score a lot of points uh, with a, with a quarterback I'm who doesn't run it. the ball. You know, I mean, he's, he, he's, his opportunities are, I think it's all upside. Um, and, sure. and so, I'm I'm good with it. I like it, you know. And and, and you know, Gibbs and we're Kieran Williams are going uh, neck and neck. I I I think I'd rather have Gibbs, you know. And and so that's where I am. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a first ever in fantasy football. Jameer Gibbs is coming off at the end of round one, mid round one in fantasy football this year. Now the problem is Montgomery is on paper the RB one. I just don't see it in a situation where I draft a running back in round one where the first drive in football week one, he's not going to be the RB1 coming out on the field. You're going to see Montgomery, and it's really going to tick you off. I think it's the first time ever in fantasy football where people are going to be drafting an RB1 in round one, and he's not truly the RB1. I love Gibbs' upside, but Montgomery's going to be a pest unless Montgomery gets hurt. 
I really think, Jim, this is the first time ever in fantasy football this has happened. I mean, drafting a person in, in round one where he's not starting, I have an issue with that. Again, I'm going to keep coming. Uh, how do you know? How do you know he's not going to start the first uh, the first That's drive? True. That's true. Because I just, based on last year's offensive scheme and based on same coaching, nothing's really changed there. And even when Jameer Gibbs came out and had those monster games when Montgomery was out, they refused to, to put Montgomery on the bench and start Gibbs. After those monster games when Montgomery, Montgomery was out, Jibs, Jibs, Gibbs earned that starting <laughs> job. Because Jameer Gibbs, Jibs, uh, Jib Jab. Wasn't there like an app called Jib Jab? It was like an app. There is an app called Jib Jab, yes. I don't know if that's still around. Anyway, I'm not no no promotion or sponsorship there. I just remembered it from like, like <laughs> 20 years ago. Um, anyway, that's when internet was in its infancy, just getting started. Anyway, so long story short, I'm I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy unless I hear something in the offseason saying that Jameer Gibbs is doing it, doing well, and Montgomery is dealing with some sort of injury and he broke his leg in in preseason. That's it. Well, That's stop saying that Montgomery's going to break his leg, man. Stop stop <laughs> doing that. You you were making you're you're giving me fits last year because I had Montgomery on several teams. And oh. but anyway, like I said, um, we know what we know that both these players are going to get work. In, in this offense. That's just how yeah. it's built. Most teams are like that anymore. Most teams are in some sort of a timeshare, but we saw during the course of the season, uh, Jameer Gibbs role was growing during the course of the season. Uh, and, and David Montgomery's was shrinking. So, you know, it's going to be primarily Gibbs with, uh, you know, with Montgomery in a significant secondary role. So, uh, so again, We'll come back to this. I think we disagree here. So I think he he goes. We both agree he goes up, but how much we're yet to see. Uh, Zamir White, who looks good now, he looked great at the end of the season last year, and free agency only brought us a washed up, mediocre Alexander Madison. So Zamir White, you know, unless they draft a top rookie running back prospect, Zamir White should be the starter here. He was like a fifth round pick, though, something like that. I think that's the only drawback. What do you think of Mister Zamir? Yeah, I mean, what we saw is once Josh Jacobs went out with that injury on like week 13 or 14, uh, Zamir White came in and was was getting RB1 volume, RB1 production. Uh, you know, the the guy was looked great. And and so now Jacobs is gone. They did bring in Alexander Madison, who I consider a quality backup quarterback, a quality handcuff, but not a guy that's going to it wrestle this work away from Samir White. I'm very positive about uh, his prospects and where he's going on the draft board right now. Um, he's currently going as the RB 32. So this is like a guy right now, ADP 104, ninth round, or maybe even a, a, a 10th round there. It's like a 10th round pick. God, I love the upside that that offers. Oh, that's going to go up after the draft. Samir White's you know, value is going to skyrocket. He's going to be a top 15 running back easily. Maybe even, yeah. I don't, I don't think so. He hasn't really moved since Jacobs was, uh, went to green Bay. Um, he has not really moved ADP wise. He's moved what up a RB little what? bit. What is the RB what right now? Like amongst running back, what's his rank? RB 32. He's the RB 32 at ADP one Oh four. Man. The only thing that's good is that if people, they can sheep just do stuff like this. They will actually think that Madison is going to be the RB one there. Let them think that, just like you think Pollard's going to be the RB1 with Tennessee, which he could be in that case, but we don't know. Um, but in this case, let them think what they want. But Zamir White, if they don't draft another running back, he's going to take the RB1 spot. Madison's just not cut out for it. He's not. You know? Yeah, and, and and you know, I mean, if you look at Madison's stats, they weren't terrible. You know, I mean, last year he was getting over four yards per carry. You know, like I said, he's a quality handcuff. He's a guy that comes in for a short period of time, can perform and can perform at a very high level. But you, he's just not he's not good enough to be in there the full season. So uh, again, but I'm not really worried about him in this uh, in this backfield. Uh, the, the Zamir White is such a bargain. And, yeah. and it's a low risk play. It's a low risk play for a potential RB one value uh, for your fantasy team. And, and so you got to take the value picks when they're available. This guy's the biggest value on the board right now. It looks like, and it looks like there's going to be a ton of value this year with guys that are like, uh, like a, a Tajay Spears and Zamir white who are going to be seen as an RB two, but could be the RB one. And uh, again, Montgomery, another example, seen as the RB2 could be and is starting as the RB1. Again, I'm not a Montgomery fan. I'm just seeing, I'm calling it how it is, right? Like 
I love Jameer. Yeah, and, and we've seen, you know, Tajay dropped after uh, after free agency. Uh, he dropped about somewhere between two and three rounds uh, on the draft board. Perfect. So he's a lot more of a bargain. I think he's going at about 88. He's he's going before Zamir White. But again, very late. And, you know, if if you don't have faith in Pollard, you know, taking Ty, Tajay, I think, is a uh, is a quality bet that isn't that expensive. It's not... It's not like a bet that will ruin or make or ruin your team if it doesn't work out because it's it's you know we're talking ninth round at that point so you're 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 talking bench depth at this point at that point of the draft so why not why not grab them for your bench put them on your bench see what happens yeah um, okay last one here uh, so yeah he's gonna go up I think top uh, top twelve upside if he gets a starting job he's got that ceiling if if they make him the guy what do you think top twenty finish if he gets a starting job. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I think uh, well, I, I think basically where Josh Jacobs did last year, I think he could easily do that. Oh, so tons of upside. Yeah, twenty eighth was where Josh finished. He's definitely going to beat that. I think for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I I think it's good, and I think Las Vegas will be better this year. You know. All right, Jim. Final guy here, Joe Mixon, who's going into a great situation. I'm not a Mixon fan. I don't like this. I, I get. I just think he's on the tail end of his career. People will disagree with me. He's not young. He's not dynamic. He's not explosive. He finished sixth last year. But again, you can look at a guy finish sixth, and this just shows you how much there is to be had with running backs this year. If Joe Mixon with a thousand thirty-four yards and only nine touchdowns finished sixth in P- in PPR. There's more to be had, like guys like Kyron, Derrick Henry, Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, all finish underneath this guy, Saquon even. All these guys that are just much better running backs finish beneath him. Um, you know, so much ceiling to be had this year. Um, you know, I still think, you know, he finished sixth. If everything goes well, he easily finishes top 10. I'm just not excited for him. I don't like him as a character. I'm not a fan of Joe Mixon. I love the Texans. I love the offense. I love CJ Stroh. Mixon, not a fan of... You know, I don't know. This sucks. I wish they would have just brought in like a Saquon or drafted a rookie there in Texas, um, you know, and the Texans, but they didn't. They just didn't. So. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, this this is just one of those things where volume matters. And yeah. if you're getting all the volume as a running back, you're going to be effective. Uh, just, just look at uh, White in, in Tampa Bay, man. That guy, Rashad yeah. White, he's not a good running back. No. But he got – all the work and so he was 270 he was effective and i think it's the same thing with mixon you know who else is there it's 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 damian pierce who has proven to be just nothing you know the 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 coaching staff doesn't like him they they weren't the ones who drafted him um and and, you know when you look at like let's say singletary versus mixon who would you say of of those two who's the better running back between those two mixon right and so we saw how effective Singletary was in that offense last year. So who's, I mean, who's to say that somehow Mixon's going to be worse than that on an offense that will probably be better this year with, yeah. uh, you know, um, with CJ Stroud being a, in his second season and stuff. I, I mean, again, uh, I just think it's, it's an all the volume kind of situation. He's going right. to get all the volume in that backfield and therefore he will be good for fantasy, even if he's not that good in uh, stats wise, you know, the dude, he catches the ball. Um, you know, he got nine touchdowns, uh, you know, on the ground, you know, he, he, he's going to have all these high value touches and targets that's going to make him valuable. And, uh, you know, again, he is a, he's a deal on the draft board. He's going right now, RB 16 at ADP 66. So we're talking, that's the sixth round. That's I, I you, you probably take him and he's going to be like your RB three. I think that's great. I think, uh, I think it's very hard for him to go down from there with the kind of situation he's in. That's where I'm at with him. So I'm not excited about him as a player, but you got to respect the offense that he's on and the volume he's going to get. Yeah. Two older backs, not really old, old, but like Jacobs and Mixon and, and great situations. And I think this is the year where we could actually, maybe not go robust RB. If I can get by Jan and if I can get Brees round one, I'm not going to pass that up. But if I miss, I could imagine getting like, you know, Tajay, Zamir White, and jo- I'm just talking hypothetical, Joe Mixon, Tajay, and, Jam- and and Zamir White as your three running backs, and they could all be RB1s on their team. So that's the type of value we're getting this year where the running backs 
are in a position to be RB ones and you're getting them for value. It's going to be a sneaky little year with running backs on getting some of these guys for value, Jim. It's interesting. It is. And you know, we saw last year, when you look at the top 10 running backs from last year, three were early round running backs. Three of them were mid round running backs and th and three or four of them were late yeah. round running backs. They're all over the board now. And, and, you know, I've been doing, uh, I've been doing these mock drafts and we see in the first six rounds, you've got 40 wide receivers coming off the board, but only 19 running backs, only 19 running backs in the first six rounds right now on best ball. And, and so you don't need to spend all that draft capital on running backs because they're available later than, than they have been in the past. And we've, we've seen this shift. We've seen the shift. It used to be in the first round, eight running backs, three or yeah. four wide receivers. And now it's just the opposite. It's eight wide receivers, three or four running backs. That's what it is in, 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 in fantasy drafts. Now it's, it's changed. And uh, you know, we need to adapt to that and, and take advantage of the values and just grab the values where they are on the draft board. I'm no, I don't know if I'm ready to adapt, but yes, we have to adapt. Things are changing, uh, but also wide receivers. They're not, you know, it's not a cakewalk with those guys either. We had a lot of guys bust last year, including Cooper Cup, you know, Devontae Adams, a lot of guys in round one bust, you know, and you just got to watch. That's why, you know, with your draft tool coming out, we're going to be monitoring this, changing it, giving you guys inside, like not inside, but intel that you need to see right in front of you. Is it a contract year? Are they ascending? Are they descending? It's very important. So the 16 round plus tool is going to accommodate. So there's the solution, which is a cheat sheet, all my optimal players, and we got the draft tool. So all that's going to be available very, very soon, Jim. I would say mid-May we should be... Uh, about the draft tool this year. I think we should do a... I think we should do a show also on regression players, players that we think are going to regress yes. uh, in, in the upcoming year for wide receivers and running backs, because there are some names that I'm, I am just not, not excited about right now. All right, guys, that's it for today. Rising and falling. Let us know in the comments what do you guys think. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Love to get your feedback. Subscribe, thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up. Really smash it, tap it, slap it. And Jim, we're out, man. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody.